I want to ask whether you think we've lost London forever between the Millennium Dome and the Olympics. It seems to have vanished off the face of the normal earth. And we've got the service flats that you refer to. And well, that, was, that was Beckett. He's referring to this. This is 1930. That's yeah. why I use that quote. I mean, it's a, it's a quote from him. He, he, his, his sense of even then was that it was like it, it was vanishing. So I, no, I don't. I don't think you know. I think my the sort of London of my vision certainly vanishes. But I think something else carries on. I mean, I think it is a it is a strange organic entity, um, and new ways of reading it appear all the time. Um, I'm I'm dissociated from a lot of. I mean, you know. Uh, traveling around in these railways that I'm, I'm writing about, you see that everybody is folded into things, that have, you know, squares of stuff. They're all wired into a, another kind of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So they're not actually there. They're not where they appear to be. They've already traveled like uh, figures out of William Burroughs into some cyberspace. They, but this is a, a different kind of journey and a different kind of writing emerges from that. What I'm worried about is I think we're, we may be losing the, the ability to uh, deal with and access what's valuable in the past because the, the actual skill to navigate the structure, the architecture of a big book is, is something that is becoming a specialist skill that I find talking to uh, young, younger students, some of them even doing stuff about my own work, they, I said, uh, well, which book have you read? I haven't read a book. You know, you just you download bits and pieces and quotes and watch interviews and you kind of build up an impression of what's going on, but it doesn't actually involve reading these terrible things called books. So um, the the written city, the imagined city, the kind of city that uh, has been celebrated for so long is is going and it's gone because a lot of it now is unoccupied. You know, it's it, such. Economically, it, it is such a place that it is just a kind of generator of income for people who are not actually engaged with it other than to generate income. So the, the huge trenches of Kensington, the stuccoed house, are empty just for people who know that you can just hold on to it for a period of time and it's worth X hundred thousand more. And along the river, more and more of these strange geometrical shapes emerge, which are again empty. So it is, it is, a, it is a weird city. But it's, it's full of a deranged energy, as it's always been. I think it's always been a, a brutal, uh, materialist sort of place. Um, and to me, interesting as a result, but um, a battle, and which is why uh, I felt I wanted to go to do a project that's American Smoke. I wanted to kind of uh, shift from this landscape. It was becoming too oppressive and too closed off. But uh, I think now, uh, having done so, I'm, I feel quite energised to, to take on the battle for another couple of rounds. <laughs> and anyway, there's a lot of other big cities in England which uh, tend to be more and more and more dominated by this uh, economic power of London, even though there are a lot of vested interests in trying to shift it to Manchester. Um, we'll see what happens there. It seems to be changing very, very rapidly. <laughs>